So this hot topic on diversity, equity, and inclusion, all of you in this room are global stakeholders, and you are accountable for moving business metrics to attract and hire really amazing talent and deliver on innovation. And we know that in order to unlock that growth strategy is to incorporate diversity and inclusion into your, into your industry and your organizations. Because we know companies that are more inclusive are six times more innovative and eight times more likely to achieve business metrics. Now, this, that is all great and we know that it, it makes sense. So we actually spend a great deal on DNI. In fact, $9.3 billion worth annually on DEI. So when we think about DEI, what, what comes to mind? Well, the conversations we've been having is some of us feel just a bit of DEI fatigue. And it's not that this fatigue in terms of, oh, it's not as relevant or, or it's uh, less meaningful. There's fatigue because there's a question of the energy and the momentum we accrued, especially in the past three years, is it moving us any closer? Are we any better off? That's the fatigue that's setting us, that's settling in right now. Now, you might have that question in your minds too. And what I'm sharing here is, well, the approaches that got us here are not going to be the ones that get us out. This is not, and, and we'll share. So what are these approaches we've been applying so far for DEI challenges? Well, in terms of stereotyping and recognizing that we have um, characteristics and, and labels, well, it, it unintentionally can trigger a sense of, well, if we're all implicitly biased, Aren't we all kind of a little racist and sexist anyway? And then there's a sense of no, normalizing this, right? So that's back, there's a backfire of this, especially when we talk about stereotyping. In DEI segregation, in, in the efforts to make everyone feel individually accepted and valued, then we create a lot of identity-based groups like ERGs. And so we celebrate one group, but then inadvertently you just set up a competition with another group. That's like, well, what about us? What about me? Do I not have a voice in this? You're, I'm seeing a lot of head nods. Like you're, you're really feeling this too. And, and then in terms of that political uh, politicization and polarization, there's so much social pressure on leaders today to listen to what's going on out there and bring it in. And what I mean by bring it in is, are we, are we responding in the ways adequately? And if you're not responding adequately, you're penalized. And in fact, if you don't respond at all and there's inaction, you're doubly penalized. So almost like you're damned if you do and then and, and damned if you don't. And so what, where are we on this polarization, right? And so these approaches in terms of trying to achieve really good things with positive intent, all of this was done with positive intent and we are making some progress, but this is not moving us as quickly as we would like. So let me have, let me just suggest another way. So this is, a re uh, this is a research study that I'm, I'm going to share for you uh, by Dr. Lasana Harris. He's a professor of UCL um, and also a member of our academic board. And what he observed in a classroom in Chicago was that there was a disproportionate amount of black students receiving detention than their white peers. Now, instead of going to the teachers and staff and calling them out and saying, hey, what's going on here? Why, why are you mistreating the black kids? Instead of doing that, all he did was ask a simple question. What made you want to become a teacher? And so he took that simple question and asked teachers to reflect on that, write up their personal stories of why they became teachers in the first place. And they ultimately came down to the purpose of, because I want to embetter their lives. I want to give them a chance at success. And that was what he did. He connected their purpose, empowering them to go back to their original career mission. And that garnered the sense, sense of empathy to the students. And what he found with this simple, simple technique and intervention, he watched a 45% reduction in racial disparity and detention in that classroom, as well as continual decline into the next academic year. So what Dr. Harris's research, the take home point is, instead of confronting bias so directly, how about you sideline it? You sideline bias. So what does that mean? Well, fundamental to sidelining bias is your sense of how we want, it's priming our sense of how we want others to see us and how we see ourselves. And that's what psychologists call identity. 
And so with identity, in terms of that sidelining research, what he was priming was your most idealized form of yourself in your role, 